You really believe this, Brian? Do you, do you have any idea how bigoted you sound? In over 32 states where the people have decided this issue, they have decided to affirm traditional marriage. The owner's manual says one man, one woman. Yeah, for, for your God. I got it. For um, the God. There's yeah. only one God, Tom. And the God well, is for man and woman. Uh, you know, authentic belief requires authentic choice. I'm, 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 I'm at a loss for words here. I don't want to be an alarmist, but maybe I do. I mean, we need to be alarmed about this issue. You really believe this, Brian? Do you, do you have any idea how bigoted you sound? Well, that's nonsense. Brian, we're, 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 we're talking in circles here. The goal of persecution is to silence witness. Freedom prospers when religion is vibrant and the rule of law under God is acknowledged. An informed patriot is what we want. Welcome to Focal Point, the home of muscular Christianity on conservative talk radio. Muscular Christianity. Where we relentlessly explore the intersection of truth and politics. The trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. Now, here's your host, Brian Fisher. And welcome to this free-for-all Fire Hose Friday edition of Focal Point AFR Talk. Today, the goal is to give you as much content as I possibly can. Today will be the definition, the very example of high-definition radio. Give you as much content per square cubic inch of air as I possibly can. More content per cubic inch of air than any other place on your radio dial. At least that is our goal. We're going to take your phone calls today. It's free for our Friday. We'll let you talk about anything that's been in the news over the course of the past week, we're going to bring you content. So it should be a fun ride. Hope you'll uh, stick around with us. Now, uh, I want to start, give myself a little bit of time to talk about what is in the Scripture. Because there's an interesting uh, passage in 1 Corinthians 6 where Paul is lamenting the fact that Christians who have a personal dispute with other members of the body of Christ, actually dragged their business in front of a pagan law court, a pagan law judge. And Paul says, look, if you do this, you're admitting defeat. Now, here he explains why. You know, uh, he says, uh, you, you, you ask yourself the question, do you ever think that you could do a better job than the judges that you read about in the newspapers, the judicial decisions that you see on television that you hear about here on Focal Point, do you ever think that you could do a better job? Are there times when you wish you could be a judge? So somebody showed up with one of these totally ludicrous lawsuits, you could just say to them, get out of my courtroom. The Constitution gives the federal bench no jurisdiction over this issue whatsoever. Get out of my courtroom. Or I'm not going to tolerate a frivolous lawsuit. Like this. This is nonsense. It's ludicrous. Get out of my courtroom. So if you've ever thought that you would be able to do a better job than the judges that right now are exercising such tyrannical rule uh, in our culture, you think you could do a better job than the Supreme Court of the United States, you are one day going to get your chance. We are one day going to get our chance. So if we complain about judicial activism, and we do, we complain about judicial tyranny, and we do, here's the beauty, here's the good news. One day, you and I are going to be in their positions. One day, you and I are going to be the judges that are making these decisions. Here's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6. When one of you has a grievance against another, does he dare go to law before the unrighteous instead of the saints? Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? That's us, the saints, that's you and me, ordinary believers in Jesus Christ. Do you not know that the saints will one day judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels? How much more than matters pertaining to this life? So if you have such cases, why do you lay them before those who have no standing in the church? I say this to your shame. 
Can it be that there is no one among you wise enough to settle a dispute between brothers? But brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers? To have lawsuits at all with one another is already a defeat for you. Why not rather suffer wrong? Why not rather be defrauded, but you yourselves wrong and defraud, even your brothers? Now, we're dealing here, I think, with a business dispute. There was some property at settlement. There were some payments at settlements. It's a, it, it, it's a dispute over some kind of business deal, some kind of contract gone wrong. And one brother feels like another brother is cheating him in business, is swindling him. And this is why Paul goes on to say, I think, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, that, look, you need to understand, if you're a swindler, if you're somebody who is cheating a brother in Christ in business or cheating anybody in business, you will not make it into the kingdom of heaven. God has absolutely no patience for swindlers and thieves. They won't even get in to the kingdom of heaven. Just as homosexuals will not be able to get into the kingdom of heaven, so neither will people who cheat in business. Here's what he says. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, that is those who have sex outside of marriage, single people who have sex outside of marriage, neither idolaters nor adulterers, that is married people who sleep around, who are unfaithful to their spouses, nor men who practice homosexuality, and he uses two terms here, one for the passive recipient, one for the more aggressive recipient, both kinds active in the homosexual community. And he says, neither the passive nor the active aggressive homosexuals will be admitted into the kingdom of heaven, nor thieves, nor the greedy. Uh, and, and the word for greed means to actually do something wrong for the sake of money. That's what it means to be greedy. It's not just feeling like you want something somebody else has. It's actually doing something that is wrong for the sake of financial gain. Nor drunkards, so substance abuse is out. Uh, nor revilers, that is those who slander and gossip about other people. Nor swindlers uh, will inherit the kingdom of God. So he says, look, here are all the things that can keep you out of the kingdom of God. So if you're a swindler, because that's specifically what he's talking about, you know, this needs to be adjudicated by people in the church. You need to bring this, the two of you, bring your dispute before wise, mature men in the body of Christ. Both of you agree to abide by the decision that they make, and you can resolve this without having to drag this uh, before the court. But understand, if one of you is at fault here, even if you get clearance in the human court, uh, you will not make it past God's screening mechanism. You will not be admitted into the kingdom of heaven. And he says, such were some of you. This is what Paul says in verse 11. Such were some of you. Some of you were substance abusers. Some of you were homosexuals. Some of you were thieves. Some of you were swindlers. Some of you were adulterers. Some of you were sexually immoral. But here is the great news. But, and here's how you get into the kingdom of heaven, no matter what the sin is in your past. So there's a great word because there are a lot of people that are listening to me right now and you've got sexual immorality in your past, you have adultery in your past, you have substance abuse in your past, you have alcoholism in your past, uh, you have homosexuality in your past, you have cheated in business, you have slandered about people. Here's the good news. You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And that is the good news for today. Well, let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you will teach us to take our disputes with our brothers before other saints rather than to take them to the ungodly for judgment. Remind us that one day we will judge the world and angels and that you have made us competent to judge the trivial things of this life. Show us how to seek out those brothers who are wise enough to settle these disputes for us. Open our eyes to see the folly of having brother go to law against brother in front of unbelievers and to recognize that going to court is already a defeat for us. We pray that our community will come to understand the sobering reality that the wicked will not inherit your kingdom. May we not be deceived. We thank you and praise you that though this is what some of us were, we have been washed 
justified in Jesus' name. Tim Wilde.